All right. Hello, everybody. How are we doing this morning? All right. Well, welcome to Church in the Village. If you will stand with us, um, we're going to sing Revivals in the Air. So hopefully this week you know it and you can sing out loud and sing along with us. Yeah? Give the Lord some praise. Amen. All right, well, would you take a moment to greet your neighbor and let him know that you are so happy to see them this morning?
got a lot. Yeah. Ooh, a man shape. Yeah. I know, I love it. Yeah. like an old timey preacher, you know. I'm telling you, ha. Ha. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Jesus. I'm going to go Jesus. Well, good morning. You guys can have a quick seat. Um, welcome to Church in the Village this morning for you that are here and you that are watching at home. Um, for you that don't know who I am, I'm Eric. I'm the pastor here. Um, I just have a few announcements this morning. I don't have very many. We do have Student Crossing tonight at 630 at the Ministry Center if anybody wants to come. I'm um, playing a couple games we'll dive back into. We're kind of going through the redemption story of the Bible and just kind of hitting a lot of the characters in the Bible. We're kind of in David right now, and, and so we're going to jump back in after we get done playing a game and, and all that good stuff. So uh, if you're a student and you want to come out tonight, 630 at the Ministry Center, um, we do have our Village Crossing. Um, we will be in um, Session 4 of The uh, Chosen on this Wednesday. And uh, so if you just want to be a part of it and you want to have a study, let me know. I've got extra books at the house. You don't even have to come. You can just do it on your own. You can watch it on Amazon Prime. It's really good. Um, it goes really well when you have the study. The, the study is really good. Like the scriptures and the study are really good. So if you want to be a part of it or if you just want a book, let me know and I'll get that to you. Um, Easter's coming April 8th. Um, we, 9th. Um, my brain's on... Uh, that's a travel day for me because that's coming back from spring breaks the 8th. So I will be here for e Easter on the, on the 9th. Um, so come out for that and uh, invite everybody. We're going to, this year we're going to try a little something different. We also, we got some, we'll make some more yard signs like we did last year. But um, we're going to here in the next couple of weeks, we'll have like a QR code up there. And then that will allow you to have like a digital invite to invite somebody. So that way you can just shoot a text and say, hey, here's our Easter um, I feel like that's kind of that could be easy for some people. It's just an easy way to say, "Hey, here you can shoot them a picture." So all you have to do is go to QR code. It'll pop up basically that right there, and then you can save that to your pictures and just send it to anybody you'd like to. Um, so that's April 9th. Um, like my brain is just like all over the place this morning. I don't know why, but it is. So that should be interesting here in about 15 minutes. So you guys get ready for the ride. Um, other, am I missing anything, Nicole? Princess Within, Amber. Um, so on March 24th, on the evening, there, hey, not just me. <laughs> Nicole's back, so it's not just me. So <laughs> um, March 20, um, 5th and 26th, right? Is that right? 24th and 25th, um, 5 to 8 p.m. on Friday night, and then... Saturday. Come back Saturday. Um, kind of teenagers, pre-teenagers. Like 11 to 18. 11 to 18. Um, Amber, it, it's from her book, but it's also dedicated to kind of, you know, finding that within and finding um, who God is in your life. And uh, my computer's been going nuts this morning, so I should have forewarned Nicole this morning already. But uh, so if you if you have a daughter or you have friends that want to be a part of that, I do know my daughter and some friends are going to be a part of it. And uh, isn't that a beautiful picture? So you want me to find a better picture for, uh, I love that picture. I, you know, that was our Christmas picture this year. So, um, and I'm sucking in like, <laughs> oh yes, men's breakfast. Matt, you have a microphone, man. You don't even have to whisper to me, right? Uh, men's breakfast is this Saturday. Um, so if you want to be a part of that at 830, just show up. 
You don't even have to tell us that you're coming or anything. We'll have plenty of food. We always have plenty of food, um, so come out for that. Um, um, and we really don't, like I probably should be more spiritual at men's breakfast, but we usually end up talking about sports, and then we end up usually talking, like, of asking about each other's jobs, and then somebody just takes over. Like, I don't know what it is, like, depending on who we want to talk about or what we want to talk about, just kind of takes over, right? So um, if you want to be a part of that, just come out at 8.30 Saturday morning's ministry center. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. Lord, I thank you for uh, just a, a breath of you, a fresh breath from you this morning. Lord, I pray that we calm ourselves. We calm whatever may be going on around us. Lord, I pray for those in the, in the room at home, whatever they're facing this morning. Whatever they may not have shared or have shared, whatever they're going through, the highs that they're going through, the lows that they're going through, and just the medium of life, Lord. I pray this morning that you just show up. You show up in their life this morning. You show up and give them a victory. Give them a healing. Give them some peace. Lord, you have freedom right now. Work in us. Work through us. Lord, let the world see what a follower looks like through us. We ask this all in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Will you stand and worship with us?
so much, Lord, for your promises and the fact that, God, you are with us to fill us with joy and with your spirit, that we would have power to move through this life, that we would walk in victory, that we would walk triumphant, Lord. God, I just pray that for all of us in here, Lord, who face various things, Lord, I pray that we would be able to stand upon your faithfulness on top of all the problems on top of all the things, Lord, that threaten to overwhelm us. Let us stand on top of those today in your faithfulness, in your righteousness, in your peace, and triumphant in your power over all of those things. Greater are you who is in us than he that is in this world. Greater are you who is in us than the things that we face the things that we see in this world. Greater are you, Lord. And let that be in our hearts and in our minds, Lord. You are faithful. You are true. You are for us and not against us. And we cling to every one of your promises that are good, that are sure. We love you. We need you. Our rock. Our solid place to stand. Have your way in this place this morning, Lord. Have your way in our hearts and in our minds and in our lives. We need you. We need you. We love you, Jesus. You're the God of covenant, faithful promise. Time and time again, you have proven to do just what you say. Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I'll remain steadfast and with my heart.
Father, that's what we're celebrating today, and Lord, we pray that we just continue as we open up your word, as we dig into 1 John today, Lord, that we just look at your faithfulness, and that you promise, and your promises are always true. So Lord, we, we continue to want to worship you. We ask this all in your Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Thank you, guys. Kids, you can head on out. Um, Miss Mikey's back there. So, Brody's going to come around with the offering if anybody needs to give us more and just flag him down. Um, this is one of my favorite times of year as a sports fan because um, here in a couple weeks, you're going to be able to watch basketball at all times, like from noon until... Um, Nicole gets sick of me and tells me to turn it off and turn on some kind of HGTV. And I love it, but what's really weird about that at times in my life is um, no matter what game I'm watching, 
I always end up finding myself rooting for one of the teams. Is anybody like that? And it's not because I've got any kind of anything else riding on it or anything like that. It's just I find myself finding a team. Like, I didn't have a dog in the fight in the Super Bowl. And I just kind of found myself kind of rooting for a team. I'm not going to tell you which team I was rooting for. Um, because some people say, well, you're biased anyway. It's just I, I've always enjoyed Jalen Hurts. I've, I've enjoyed him at Alabama. That doesn't mean I was rooting for the Eagles, but I always like to see that guy win. If you've ever followed his career, just kind of a meek, humble guy. But uh, especially in March Madness, I remember a couple of years ago, uh, me and Nicole kind of took a trip at the tail end of her spring break at, down to Cincinnati and kind of did an overnight. And um, it's when all those teams were getting beat in the tournament. It, um, um, not Kentucky last year. It was the year before that. So don't you guys don't make fun of Kentucky getting beat last year. But uh, now Brody won't talk to me the rest of the day because I brought that up. But uh, I remember we were sitting and we were watching and we found ourselves just kind of rooting for some of these just kind of random teams that were beating some of these bigger teams, right? And, and so I'll find myself just rooting for them. And then the next thing I know, it's like I've rooted for these teams my whole life. Like everything that happens, I'm just there on the on on just my toes. Like I can't believe it. I want them to win. I, this has got to be. And if they lose, it's just like oh my gosh. Like it ruins my evening. And I don't know why that happens. You see, as we're on these journeys of living a life as a love letter from God, see this will happen. We'll find ourselves devoting ourselves to the things of the world, the things of of the world more than the Creator of the world. Now let me state that again, right? We'll find ourselves devoted voting to the things or how about if I put it this way? We'll find ourselves devoted to the creation more than the creator. So we're going to dig into 1 John chapter 2 and we're going to read verses 15 through 17 this morning. Um, 15 says this, do not love the things of the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the pride of life, if you have a um, Bible out or if you've got a phone out or if you want to, those three things we're going to get to here in a bit, right? So the desires of the flesh, the desires of the eyes, and the pride of life, it is not from the Father, but it's from the world. And the world is passing away along with its desires, but whoever does the will of God abides forever. All right, so now we got John. He's now shifting his gears a bit from walking together like we talked about last week. See, he's talking a little bit about walking together in a life of what we, you know, um, a life together. And now he's shifting his gears to talking about more of a life of what we love. He introduces this concept of the things of this world, right? And we'll, we'll kind of dig in a little bit what that means here in a second, but right? And I think when we read this, it's just like the most misused context in Scripture, money. A lot of people will say the root of all evil is money, right? But it's not. The root of all evil is the love of money. So the things of the world aren't all bad, But it's when we love the things of this world more than we love God the Creator. And what that means by loving the things of this world more than God, it becomes our driving force. The things of this world becomes our driving force. Um, for me, sometimes sports can do that. It can become a driving force in my life. My family knows that. We... Sometimes they know we gear our days towards that, right? Some, I mean, that can be a driving force in my life. It controls my life. It's, it's what takes the wheels, right? And John's not really talking about the physical world here, even though it can become our object of love, the actual physical world, right? I almost, like, it can become our object of love at times. But it's more of a mindset that the world lives by. It's a win-at-all-cost mindset. It's no different back then than it was here. Now today. It's a mindset that it's a me above everything else. 
And see that if we fight to receive the things the world has to offer, and, and so when we fight for that, it doesn't matter who we leave in our wake. Like people just get left behind us because we're just fighting for what makes us more important. See, John's saying here, on the contrary, those that, for followers, it's true that we give because of what was done for us. Not, not we want because we're the top of the food chain. We, we want because everything needs to fall for us. It's contrary to the world because when we follow Jesus, it's really not about us at all. It's about the one that we follow, right? So two questions as I dig in this morning. The first one is this, what will last forever? And the second question is simply this, what is the love of the world? So what will last forever? This is, might be the biggest aha moment ever, eternal life. Nobody, anybody going to laugh about that? Because I mean, that's literally forever, right? Eternal life. I have things in my life that I think will last forever. I have shirts that are in my drawer right now that are double the age of Brody. Brody's 15, getting ready to turn 16, right? I know I have shirts that are over 30 years old. Some of them we'll put in a, we have a hope chest that we put things in. Um, I do have most of my Kentucky, like, I've been alive for a couple Kentucky national championships, so I've got those in there. I've got a, uh, I've got a couple of my league championship shirts that I've won in all the schools that I've coached at. Um, I've got a couple Campbellsville shirts that I realized that I graduated college 23 years ago, college. So, uh, yeah. And, and so I've got a couple of things that I know are older than Brody, right? But I'm not the worst in my family about having things that are old. I know my dad sitting back there, and I don't know if he can hear me or not this morning. His, by the way, for you guys been praying, his ears are doing fantastically better. He had some infections in his ear, and that's where he was kind of, so he's back. Um, normally, he just turns his hearing aids off when I start preaching, because um, he knows I'm going to tell stories about him. But uh, um, I know my dad has clothes that are double my age. Maybe. He's not double my age, but you guys give what I'm saying. Like, my dad's probably got clothes that are 60 years old. Am I right, sis? He has, like, original Jesus sandals, like Jesus wore. No, he has 1960, like, peace sandals that he wore back in the 60s. He still has his army uniform that he wore, and he got drafted in, like, 68. He has, like... A Notre Dame t-shirt that I used to wear when I was young that was from like 70s. And the reason my dad can do this is if I buy my dad something new, right? He will not wear it for at least two years. Don't know why. So you can't buy my dad anything that has a date on it. Because if I buy him something that says 2023 National Championships, if it's Duke that wins it, which we're, me and John, we're hoping we're not, right? We're, right, we're hoping not. We'll never hear the end of it, how John Trier's the best, right? So if I was to buy him that, he'll never wear it because it has a date on it. So you have to buy him things that doesn't have dates because he won't turn on. I bought him a nice sweatshirt a couple years ago, and the first time I ever seen him wore it was last Sunday. That's just what my dad does, right? He thinks everything's just going to be eternal, right? <laughs> shoes, he's got shoes in there. That's, it's, um, he, growing up, we kind of split my closet a little bit with him, so he had his suits in my closet. He had a 1973 Leaser lime green suit that he never wore. And I bet you still got that suit in there, don't you? You still got suit, don't you? No way. <laughs> right? So he just keeps things forever, right? See, because of the love of God is eternal, we now have a chance at eternal life and communion with him. See, that's what heaven's about. Heaven's not that we get these streets of gold and these mansions. Heaven's about that we get to spend eternity with the creator of the world. And see, whatever, whatever's of this world that we long for will pass and is passing away now. But what is in him will have 
will have it eternally. See, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life of this eternal life that we have. See, everything that comes from God has come from that promise of eternal life. The most famous scripture in the Bible is John 3, 16. And it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. You've got to understand this. We have eternal life because of the first part of it, for God so loved the world. We don't get eternal life if it's not for God so loved the world. And Now, if you break down those texts, right, that world means not the world that we're talking about this morning, not the world, the mindset of the world. It actually means, literally, in the Greek, it means everybody that has ever existed and ever will exist. For God so loved the world, we now have eternal life. So, if that's how we get eternal life, then that's what lasts for eternity, is His love. If a consequence of his love is eternal life, then his love has to be eternal. Don't miss the fact that he is constantly drawing people to him through that love, but also changing them to be more like him. See, that's the fact that if, if I was to repent and confess anything as a pastor this morning to you, would be simply this. I've forgotten about, or I've put limitations on how much God can change people. It's not about, hey, just I'm going to clean up, then I'm going to come to God, I'm going to get saved, and then I can start. God will save us. He will constantly draw people to him, and then he changes. Because don't miss this fact, that's what his love does. It love, his love loves you so much where you're at, and he loves you too much to leave you where you're at. He's constantly changing us. He's changing us to look more like him. See, the love of the world is passing. Because of the love of the things of this world is a love of self. See, we're not eternal beings. Our bodies are like tents. They're passing away. The things of this world, you know, I, I don't understand how dad's got stuff that moths don't eat in the house. I don't understand how I can wear things forever and they don't get holes in them. But they do wear out. They do mess up. And see, just like those things, the things of the world are passing. See, we're being made new. Which means some of these things will need to pass in our life. If we're being made new and we're being made eternal one day to live with, with Christ, there's going to be some things that need to pass in our life, right? Right? But see, if we trust in the love of God and the eternal love of God, we won't miss those things. Tim Keller puts it this way. The gospel is this. We are more sinful and flawed in ourselves than we ever dare believe. Yet at the same time, we are more loved and accepted in Jesus Christ than we ever dared to hope. See, we don't believe how bad we are Yet, we don't believe how good and deep his love is. So just as far as this is, this is that far as well. So that's what lasts forever, the love of God. You feel like you've messed up? The love of God is there to pick you back up. You feel like that you're every time that you do something for God, you're two steps forward, one back, right? Guess what? He still loves you. His love is eternal. His constant changing in His love is eternal. We will never be perfected in Him until one day we're in glory with Him. So this sanctification, this journey process we have, is just relying and abiding forever in His love as He's changing us. So if we have eternal life, then what is the love of the world? It's simply what we think is benefits, right? Right? Um, usually when me and our family are getting ready to make a big purchase, we'll look at the pros and cons, right? We'll look at how our family will benefit or how our family can suffer because of the purchase. Um, I wasn't going to share this. We're kinda, I'm, I'm in the market for a newer vehicle to me, a little bigger one. Brody's going to drive here soon, so we're going to kind of give pass things on to him and, 
And, and so we're kind of, and so yesterday we had a day where we didn't have to do anything. Nicole wasn't traveling around the world with Lily. Um, so we had a day yesterday, and so we call a place, and we're like, hey, we'd like to drive this car. Maybe we might think it's in our, our price range there. And, and uh, listen, Nicole had a pilot. She wanted better gas mileage, so she got the car she has now. And I'm so vain, I wouldn't drive a pilot because it didn't look like a man's car. So that's the whole reason we don't have the pilot anymore is because I don't think it looks like a man should be driving a pilot, all right? So I'm just going to confess that. I must be confessing everything today, right? So, so we went to go drive a car to look more manly yesterday. And so we call. I'll make an appointment to drive it. I get there. We pull in. Somebody's looking at the car. And you're just kind of like, should I get out and lick it real quick so they know it's mine? Um, I didn't do that. I didn't do that, I promise. <laughs> right? And then I go in, and I'm like, hey, Larry said, come on in. And I sat down, like 10, 15 minutes, and Nicole was only Nicole and Lily can do. They just sat in the car, and they're like, hey, let me know when you need me. And I'm like, okay, I guess I don't need you. But um, I sat there for like 15 minutes, and nobody talked to me. Right? So, so we had talked about this, right, about making a purchase. And then so we just now I walked out, and I was like, hey, man, it's okay. If somebody's looking at it, just let me know. We'll, come, we'll stop back later today. And, and so we went to go look at another car. And we go there. <laughs> this is no exaggeration. Somebody was looking at it. <laughs> and then we go in, and the guy says, oh, the battery's dead. You can't drive it. And I was like, okay, guy, we're not buying a car today, all right? So, so we do look at it. We're not just kind of like it was just the weirdest day yesterday. And so we looked at a third one, and that was uh, that's a whole other. I'll probably be in another sermon one day because that was a weird one. But um, we, we try to look at the pros and cons, right? And this is, directly, this is directly an effect from Nicole's processing purchasing strategy. Because if she just said, go get you a car, I would have just, whatever the first one looked like, I would have bought it. And I would have come home and she'd be like, how much it costs? Don't even know, Nicole. Just bought it. Because her purchasing strategy is just, hey, we're going to stop. We're going to look at the pros and cons. What would we have to give up if we're going to buy this? What does it do for our family, right? See, the love of the world is more of a selfish thing. It's like my purchasing strategy. I liked it. I liked the color. I liked the way it moved. I liked, I liked how fast it was. See, when we view the world from our eyes and how it benefits us, we are now looking at the love of the world. It is doing whatever we can to make sure we come out on top. It's like building little G-gods. We're going to serve whatever we can so we can get out on top. See, the little G-gods, the, the idols that people used to worship back in those days, right? It was simply about doing just enough to make sure that they shined their favor on you. So they not only would sacrifice, but they would have festivals. They would do these things that maybe the God of rain would send rain. You see, God is ultimately changing us in a way that is absolutely contrary to all of that. He's asking us to die to ourself and follow Him. There's three things that, that um, <clears throat> John uses in here that is actually a direct um, from Adam and Eve as they, they fell, right? And they, they ate the fruit, and it's the desires of the flesh. And it's the desires of the eye. And it's the pride of life, right? So in Genesis 3, 6, it says this. So when the woman saw that it was good for food, that's a desire of flesh. She desired after the fruit because she felt like it was good for her nutrition. And it was the delight to her eyes. It looked good to her. And that the tree was, be, was to be desired to make one wise. That's the pride of life. It makes me above everybody else. She took its fruit and ate, and she gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. See, the things of the world will always cause us to look out for us, but God wants us to trust in him more, not in ourself. Because ultimately, that's what leads to eternal life. So I'm going to ask the 
ladies to come back up. C.S. Lewis puts it this way, if you want to get warm, you must stand near the fire. If you want to be wet, you must go into the water. If you want joy, power, peace, eternal life, you must get close to or even into the thing that has them. See, so I'm not up here saying today that the things of the world are bad. It's when we love the things of the world more than the ones that created them. That's when our life is being shifted a different way. See, the object of the things that lead our life. And I know I can get that way. Nicole knows I can get just a compulsion sometimes in doing things. And, and, and if you look at these two verses, John is trying to say, hey, listen, there's a different way of doing things. God is causing you to do different things. Um, so we've been watching um, The Chosen in, in season two, and, and the things about season two, there's this episode in, in episode three where the disciples are simply just talking about, when, when's he going to ask us to pick up a sword and defeat the Romans? Or when's he going to let us take over political? When's he going to let us do these things? And all the time that they're saying these things, Jesus is healing people. And you can actually go and look at that in Matthew and Luke. And it's a, it's a story where Jesus is healing all these people and the disciples are just kind of waiting for that, right? They had, they had a preconceived notion of who Jesus was. But yet Jesus came to heal and change the world. I'm not saying anything about what, what, what we should look like as followers. We'll get to that here in the next few weeks, right? This is what we should look like. There is a, there is a way that we should carry ourselves. There's a way that we should do these things. But first and foremost, we've got to understand, if we desire anything else more than the creator of the world, then that has become a little G-God in our life. And you might be saying, well, I, I don't, praise God, because I do. I do. So let us take up a life that is following Jesus. Let us lay down the desire to make it about us. Let us trust in his love. And here's the most important part about his love. And let us trust in what that love is making us. Let us love the eternal more than the things of this world because they are passing away, but his love lasts forever. So two questions and I'm done this morning. First one is this, do you know you have eternal life? I always try to ask a question like that every week. And for some, it may be like you might say, well, I didn't ever think of it that way. If the only way to have eternal life is to answer the love of the call of love that God has on your life, to follow him, then that's how you get eternal life. So you can ask it a multiple, multiple of ways. Are you ready to follow? Do you have eternal life? Are you ready to submit to God, right? And, and those are for, I ask that question for people that's never done that in their life. They ever say, hey, you know, I'm going to follow Jesus. Not that you just know Jesus, but you know Jesus. Always, every week I always try to say, if that's you this morning, I'm going to talk to you more. Or anybody in this room can talk to you. It doesn't, there's nothing special about me. There's nothing special. I don't have the end, though. You could go to anybody in this room right now and say, hey, I'm ready to follow Jesus. And I guarantee you, just because I trust what God says in his word, that that person will be filled with what God wants you, what, what, what you need to hear. But it's really just knowing that you've sinned, that you know what Jesus did for you, and you cry out him and say, I'm going to follow you. And here's the thing about that life. Here's the thing about eternal life is it starts the moment that you decide to accept to follow him, 
but you're, you're being changed even in this physical life. And you've got to be willing every morning to wake up and just say, you know what, I'm, gonna let, I'm just going to let ride today, Lord. I'm going to love the way you're changing me. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to fight the ways that you're going to change me. And, and to be honest with you, more times or not, I'm not that way. Which brings me to the second question. The second question is simply, what do you fight for? Do you fight for things that either put you on top, make your, your life more easy, which is not a bad thing to do. Following Jesus doesn't mean that you, that's, that you lose everything. It just means that you gain a Savior and you follow Him. But if I fight for those things of God more than I fight for God in my life, then I need to turn from that. And sometimes, and this is going to sound funny, and I'm not meaning to be funny. This morning, there's times that I'll get up and preach that I feel good, and I'll take some allergy medicines. I've done all that kind of stuff. And then there's times I get up here, and my ear clogs up. Right now, I just will follow me real quick. Today's one of those days that my ear is clogged right now. And I think sometimes God clears, clogs my ear so I hear myself. And today is a day that I needed to hear myself. Because there's a lot of things that I fight for that aren't that, that distract me and that take my gaze off of God. There's a lot of things in my life that do that. There's a lot of things in this world that I say, man, I, as a good pastor, I'll say, nah, but I do fight for them. And as a, a pastor, as your pastor, you know, I want to confess it. I want to turn from those. I want to repent for those things. And I just want to... Abide in his love. I don't want to fight and resist anymore who he's making me to be. It doesn't have to look like what you think it looks like. Just let God work and see what happens. So as I pray, I'm going to ask you guys to stand. Father, I come to you today, and I'm crying out for forgiveness in those days in my life where I've made it a little bit more about me than you, where I fought for things that that are more important to me than they are you. Lord, I pray for that one today that just says, I want eternal life, or that two, or maybe three, four, five. Let us follow the eternal love you give and let us trust in what it's making us to be. We give you the glory and honor and we ask this in your son Jesus Christ's name. Amen.
Thank you guys for coming out today. Um, if you need anything this week, let us know. You can always contact us through social media, emails, everything's kind of the same. CNVCarlisle at gmail is our email. Um, hopefully you guys have a great week, and we'll see you guys next week.